You guys want an FM tactic that turned the team predicted 18th into champions with 65% possession? If you do, then do stick around. So it's Josh from FM Scout, and today I'm bringing you another one of Nap's latest creations. This is a fantastic 4 2 3 1. It's a bit different from your average 4 2 3 1, but works absolutely incredible. As I said in the intro, it turned the team predicted 18th in to champions, dominates the ball, 60% possession plus on majority of the saves, and also brilliant going forward. So do stick around. If you do enjoy the tactics, smash the like button and subscribe to the FM Scout channel. So we're going to kick things off with the powerhouse team, get it out of the way, and then we're going to focus on the smaller teams. But with the powerhouse team, being PSG, we managed to win the Champions League, the French League, the French Cup, and the Trophy de Champion, scoring 141 goals, only conceding 14, and that is right, zero red cards across the season, which is really good to see. 106 points coming in the league compared to Lyon, who come with 74, so no real competition there. In terms of the actual team stats, as you can see right now, most points per game at 2.79, most goals at 141, most shots for at 833, fewer shots against 180. 81. Most possession at 64%. Funny enough, not the highest we actually had in this test and phase, as obviously there was a team that did get 65, and most clean sheets were 26, and the fewest conceded at 14. Now, something this tactic does, and majority of 43 ones will do this, is it's a very balanced sort of scale. So it's very good defensively, always good building up, and it's just a really, it's the most solid formation in football, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you think is the best formation in real life football and in the game, but in my opinion, I would say a 4 2 3 one but there are a couple of things that make this very unique compared to the rest, which we are going to talk about when we break it down. But going over to the actual data hub, 3.71 goals per game, conceded at 0.37, so a really, really, really good defensive display and a pass completion of nearly 89%, so not only have we got the possession, got the pass completion, we are playing liquid football and are something we love to see. Right, and then we're going to go over to Newcastle. Obviously, a team predicted to finish on the game around under the sort of European placements. And we've come in and won it. And we are going to show you the league table because there were a couple of teams that had a, quite, a couple of questionable seasons, but still, we won the division. Sky, Sky Bet, English Premier League champions. Goals scored at 99. Goals conceded at only 32, which is quite good for this Newcastle team. As good as Newcastle are, they definitely don't have the best defence in the league. And as you can see, quite a few red cards. I'm going to be real. Quite a few bookings coming in. Obviously, Nats Tactics do a Occasionally pick up the book and here and there, and obviously we are going to go over ways that you can remove them. But just to show you, this is very dependent on the league you're in. So, for example, for PSG, we got zero. And that's because I think, obviously, we're on the ball more, we're more comfortable. Whereas Newcastle, we're sort of one of the underdog teams against the real, real big giants. So we're going to then games maybe a little bit on edge, putting in rash challenges. So it does make a big difference on the league you're in as well. But going over to, firstly, the team stats. We only feature in three of them on this occasion. Most points per game at 2.55, most goals at 99, and the most clean sheets at 17. In terms of possession, I feel like we held our own still with 57%, and obviously the pass completion at 87. So I actually do feel like we still held our own in those relative categories. Going over to the homepage, I want to show you this league table, purely just to explain it. As you can see here, we did didn't go invincible by any means of the imagination. We won 31, we drew four. Them draws coming in, three 1-1s one and a 2-2. Two -two. Three losses coming in, um, only one real, real stampede, and that is against Tottenham. Who would, who would have thought that? Um, but as you can see here, so Liverpool, 23 wins, 10 draws, a whole 10 draws, nine of them being 1-1, one -one, obviously one against us, and five losses there. And they're all relatively close games. You don't have Manchester United coming in with 22 wins, eight draws and eight losses. Man City coming in with 23 wins, four draws. How have Man City, how have they lost 11 games? I, I need to look. They've still got Pep Guardiola. Tactics, senior squad. What is going on? What is going on? It's a full strength team. I've got no idea how they've picked up that many losses because they are flying in real life. But at the end of the day, we've won the division. And talking of actual stats in general, in terms of the actual data hub, 2.61 goals per game, which is really, really impressive with this Newcastle team. Um, conceded per game at 0.84, so a little bit higher. But to be expected, at the end of the day, we were ranked second overall, which is still really impressive. And the pass completion at 87%. This is the real standout one for me. It's going to be Reading, predicted 18th. That is right, 18th, all the way down here where Sunderland finished. And we have come out and completely flipped it and won the Skybet Championship and also got to the Carabao Cup final, where unfortunately we just fell short to the likes of Arsenal, who obviously are a great team. We scored 94 goals in the league, 
conceded only 29. And that's a good way to the bookings because only one red card. Just showing you that clearly that season we had at Newcastle was a little bit of just an aggressive season. I'm not being on the league, so who cares? But overall, a fantastic season over in the Skybet Championship. In terms of the team stats, funny enough, this is actually the best possession stat we had out of anyone. Most points per game at 2.2. Most goals at 94. Fewer shots against at 339. Best pass completion at 89%. Most possession at 65, which um is 5% more than Middlesbrough in second. Fewer conceded at 29. And also the most clean sheets coming in at 23. Going over to the data hub, then we are going to have a look. Just over two goals a game, so a little bit less goals conceded, but the goal, a um, little bit less goals going in, should I say, sorry. But I feel that's because probably we had the ball so much, we were just a little bit patient on the build-up, a little bit slower, but clearly we've got enough goals to win the division, which is all that we really care about. Pass completion actually getting on towards the 90 mark, which is incredible with a Reading team, and conceded really impressed me here at 0.63. So overall, a real, real successful season. I'm going to go over to a team that I personally picked because they're one of my favourite teams to watch in real life at the moment and that is going to be Feyenoord we'll change this very quickly we'll go to the team competition so you can see um, we actually won the Dutch League which is really really impressive quite convincingly over Ajax as well we got all the way to the Dutch Cup final where unfortunately we lost against Ajax not the best display in you know any European competition really but the main the main focus being obviously that we did win the league quite convincingly over Ajax. 106 goals scored, only 11 conceded, and only the one red card. So we've really cut out that discipline issue, it seems. It seems that Newcastle just have a few aggressive players quite clearly because all the other saves have been zero, if not one, which is not bad across the whole season. In terms of team stats, you can see we actually feature in what is going to be six, being most points, most goals at 106, fewer shots against at 193, most shots saw at 611, most clean sheets at 24, and the fewest conceded at 11. In terms of possession, we still had a good season at 60%, and the best pass completion, obviously, at 89%, which are all the second best pass completion, should I say, or technically, technically, they are in fifth, but it is what it is. Going over to the data hub, we are going to look. 3.12 goals per game, conceded at 0.32, so I believe this is the best defensive display we've actually put on. Might even be better than PSG, in my opinion. And pass completion, you know, getting on towards that 90 mark, but obviously just not hitting that ranking as fifth overall in the league. But do you know what? Four fantastic saves. What a, I mean, what a set of seasons. Tested all over the globe and got great results. So do let me know how you get on with this. Obviously, you can download this in the link below. And honestly, what a map. What a tactic. Picked out a game. I went for the one with the most sort of amount of goals and also a challenging fixture. And this is the one I've come to. It's going to be against Inter Milan in an 8-0 win in the first leg as Hakimi goes down the right, a ball directly into the box, a poor clearance from Dumfries into Soler and a shocking keeping from Onana. I mean, the goalkeepers can't be questionable on this game, but that, I mean, he has to do better. That, you can't argue that. Mendes over to Lionel Messi. Back into Neymar Jr. Look at the passion from the fans here, by the way. Got the little smoke signals out. Back into Neymar, who's probably going to cut it back. He is into Lionel Messi. A driven, I mean, you're not stopping that. Great play down the left-hand side. Neymar comes inside and obviously a great ball back into the box when Messi tucks it away. Marquinhos with the high press. We do love to see that. Back into Lionel Messi, who sort of just dribbles it past him. A great ball through into Neymar. And that just looked effortless from Lionel Messi. Obviously something we're so used to seeing in real life. Hakimi now picks up the ball, just taking all the time in the world to go down this right-hand side. Absolutely skins the man there. Ball inside into Verratti. And I want you to look right now. If you love attack and tactics, pay attention because we have literally got one, two, three, four, five. Five players all in the box waiting for that. Obviously, we can't include this guy because he was the one that he's going to include the ball. But there's so many options in that box when it comes to actually really putting a chance together. And it's one of the main reasons I love this tactic. It really is. And we are going to talk about the fullbacks when we break down the tactic, but they play such a crucial role. Hakimi again getting involved. DeMarco poor from him. A um, bit of a scrappy one, to be honest. It's a good finish from Neymar, but the defence has to be doing better there. I feel at this point their confidence is probably just completely gone. And why wouldn't it be? Hakimi again, who I am going to say right now, dearie me. Theory, me, son. Oh, no, no, not having a good one. Hakimi has been involved, and I want to say every single goal so far. And honestly, this guy, fair play to him. It's not just him. This position that we're going to be playing with works so well. And... Okay, Onana, it's all over. It's all over the gap. It's a great crack at goal, but he just hit the bar and he was like, "What? Oh, where is it? Hello? <laughs> what am I seeing? What am I seeing from that? Honestly, the match engine is something special. A great ball over the top there into Mbappe, into the near corner. And do you know what? It's a very convincing win against a great Inter Milan team. I mean, it's a great team on paper. Obviously, not as good as ours, but we absolutely thumped them.
We are now going to break down the tactic for you boys, but if you are enjoying today's video, smash the like button and subscribe to the FM Scout channel. And if you do enjoy myself as a creator, do come over to my YouTube. You can find it in the description. We do tactics ourselves, we do rebuilds and much more. Do come over and say hello. I'd love to see some faces. But let's go ahead and talk tactics. So, as you can see, the real key thing I want to talk to you boys about is the importance of these fullbacks. Obviously, inverted wingbacks, we are going to go over the roles in a second. But in particular, we noticed it with Hakimi. The attacker one is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, Gets forward, gets involved so much, comes inside. It's just honestly absolutely incredible. The left back also got involved as well. Not as much because obviously he's on a supportive role. The attacker one was really the standout one. But this is what makes this 4 2 3 1 a little bit different. Um, I really like the way it works with a 4 2 3 1. It's nice to see Volante back in the system from that. A DM as well. We do love to see it. But going over to the actual team instructions. So, tactical style is a custom tiki taka. Mentality is going to be set to positive. In possession, we've got fairly wide, pass into space, underlap left and right, play out of defense, much shorter passing with a slightly lower tempo. So, it's also not going to be too strenuous on your players either. Work ball into the box alongside of low crosses. That's how you see Hakimi come inside. Put them lovely balls across the floor. And obviously, usually it was going to be Neymar putting them in the back of the net and dribble less. Going over to the in transition tab, we've got counter press. Nothing selected when the possession has been won because pretty much we're just trying to maintain the ball, control the game, dictate the pace of the game. Slow pace down from goalkeeper. Distribute to the centre backs while rolling his out. Now, you could have take short goal kicks, but there obviously is a reason. I can't strictly put my finger to why that is. Um, Maybe because in this match engine, there are goalkeeping errors with taking short kicks. I rarely see a lot of them from rolling it out, so maybe that is why. And out of possession, we've gone with a standard defensive line. I feel like a high line would have been too much for this, so a standard line is a great shout from Nap. High press line of engagement, much more often, and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Now, going over to the player roles, a sweeper keeper on support on the default instruction, so nothing really too special there. On the right, we've got an inverted wing back on attack, simply on tackle harder. Now, as always... You are going to see a few of these players on tackle harder. Now, you can take these off and it is going to lower the bookings. Now, I will say, I will say, we only had one season where we had a bad amount of bookings, obviously with five red cards, which is a little bit, a little bit too hefty. But other than that, it was zero and one and one. So that isn't bad at all. So to be honest, I would leave it as it is because it was only one bad season in terms of the bookings. And on the left wing back, inverted wing back on support. Again, default instructions with the additional tackle harder. Two ball playing defenders on the left, we've got tackle harder, and on the right, we've got him on not tackle harder. So, again, only one of them's got tackle harder. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter which one you would have on. Um, there's obviously a reason why he's gone with the left one, but I visibly can't see that. So, in my in my opinion, I probably wouldn't have tackle harder on either of them. Um, but you are more than welcome to go with it. Going over to the DM on support, simply on tackle harder, and next to him, the volante on support, get further forwards, move into channels and tackle harder. One of my favourite roles this year, by the way. Let me know what you think of the Volante role in this match engine. On the right-hand side, we've got an inverted winger on support. On take more risks, stay wider, close down more, tackle harder, and also mark tighter. And on the right-hand side, we've got an inverted winger on support. On stay wider, close down more, tackle harder, and mark tighter. Going to the more central area, we've got an attacking midfielder. I don't know why I nearly messed up there. And he is on the basic of the basic. Completely told to do nothing. A nice supportive role, doing a little bit of everything. Not being too aggressive, not being too defensive. Just a nice sort of player that floats about the midfield, spreads the play, dictates the pace. Something which is really crucial in this team. And to finish it off, an advanced forward on attack, on close down more, tackle harder, and mark tighter. And that is going to be this map tactic broken down. As always, if you have enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. You can download the tactic below in the description. And I'll see you boys on Sunday for another tactic video.